Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks a lot for inviting me here. Thanks a lot, Martin and Emma. Uh, it's a real pleasure uh, to be here in Dublin and see everyone in person. I met so many people on Zoom, and now finally I can meet people face-to-face, uh, -face, which is uh, great. So a couple of words uh, about uh, myself. I've uh, been an executive or a, a co-founder of uh, already four uh, longevity-related companies, and uh, today I am the part of a Jiro.ai team, and uh, today I will talk about cost-effective human trials enabled by digital biomarkers of biological age which we develop. So the key message is that uh, uh, the biomarkers based on your smartphone and smartwatch data can have uh, the same fidelity as uh, blood-based biomarkers. Uh, they are not as accurate as DNA methylation clocks, uh, the most advanced ones. Uh, however, uh, there are several very important niches where these uh, biomarkers can be used. Uh, for instance, one such niche might be a mass testing of supplements, combination of supplements, or combination of supplements and lifestyle interventions uh, in a cost-effective manner, and then to test the most, uh, the, the best uh, performing uh, interventions further and uh, more deeply. So uh, the idea for JiroSense uh, started uh, at Jiro. So thus, I have uh, to uh, tell you a couple of words about what we do uh, at Jiro in general. Um, Jiro was founded by uh, physicists, so thus we apply physics of complex system to analyze um, vast uh, data sets of EMRs, uh, uh, GVAS uh, data, uh, DNA methylations, uh, and uh, many other types of data uh, uh, to understand the patterns of aging. Uh, the recent uh, discovery which we have uncovered uh, from this data is actually that humans do have uh, two phenotypes of aging. Uh, the one uh, senescence frailty phenotype, and it's our internal name for it, uh, and it's uh, usually related to late life phenotype. And the other is uh, true aging, gradual loss of resilience, and tropic uh, entropy-like phenotype. Uh, why it is important? Uh, it is because mice do only exhibit one phenotype, and it's frailty phenotype. So that means that readouts we get uh, from longevity studies uh, in mice might be heavily skewed towards only one, one phenotype in humans. Uh, so we predict that uh, this um, first generation of interventions uh, would add uh, no more than 10 years. Um, uh, Jiro itself is focused uh, on the second phenotype, uh, which is gradual loss of uh, resilience. Uh, we publish our findings uh, extensively. Uh, for instance, uh, a paper that we published last year uh, was uh, named the top 25 uh, health science articles uh, of the year. Um, so um, please also uh, be aware that uh, in the nearest weeks or uh, months we will be announcing uh, quite an exciting collaboration with one of two uh, uh, top three pharma uh, companies, uh, which uh, involves uh, aging. Um, and um, uh, we, our plan with JiroSense is to spin the company off at some point, and that's the information for investors out there. Please keep a look on what we do. So other things what we have observed in Jiro is uh, that with age, biomarkers uh, tend to fluctuate more. That is not our data. It's a graph from a paper uh, of, uh, of last year where you can see that uh, almost all biomarkers tend uh, to fluctuate more with age. So just in 20 years, you get 
much higher fluctuations. So basically, it uh, resembles uh, entropy. Uh, we uh, have observed uh, the same patterns in blood-based uh, biomarkers, in uh, step-based biomarkers, and in our uh, biomarker that combines steps, or steps and heart rate. We also have seen uh, the same data um, with the name isolation base uh, biomarkers. So the um, um, y-axis is a little bit uh, illogical here. So it's one divided by variance. So it means the higher the variance, the lower uh, the value on, on the y-axis. So we basically see that uh, all biomarkers tend to converge uh, to uh, some point after 110, 120 years. So a couple of words uh, about what's behind our algorithm and why uh, does it work. So we uh, take data from a smartphone, preferably a smartphone and a smartwatch. And uh, uh, then using uh, existing protocols like uh, Apple Health Kit or Google Feed, uh, we can uh, obtain weeks, months, and even years worth of steps data. And that's what's important, the longitudinal time series nature of this data. So we can observe uh, movement patterns throughout months and see how a person moves. And that's why we can imply uh, his biological age. So then uh, we use our uh, uh, AI model also we are based on physics of complex system to uh, compute several parameters. What, one of them is biological age acceleration and then we can compute biological age from it. The other one is resilience and because we uh, get whole history of steps, we can compute the trajectory of biological age which will uh, become very important, and I will tell you uh, about it a little bit later. Uh, we can uh, analyze data from an individual smartphone, or we can uh, analyze data in bulk, bulk, or we can get the data from uh, trials or biobanks. Uh, so uh, the question uh, I had when I first encountered the technology, why even use uh, steps as a marker is as we have like uh, molecular biomarkers and you have uh, heard Zolman uh, talking about it before me. So how much you can, you can have gigabytes of data from these biomarkers. But uh, why um, we can use and where we can use um, uh, step-based biomarkers. First uh, use is conveniency. It's a, a biomarker with least friction that I know of. The only thing uh, a study subject has to do is basically to allow us to uh, access uh, his health kit uh, in an iPhone. That's it. Um, no uh, doctor is needed to assess frailty index or take a blood sample, uh, and no medical, uh, or, um, uh, medical staff or a lab is needed to assess this sample. So that's why uh, it's very convenient and you can uh, organize studies on the go. The second uh, really important part is the price. Uh, as you probably know, the name methylation is costly. It costs uh, several hundred bucks per measurement. And if you do uh, trials, you would need at least to measurements. Uh, the same goes with glycation clocks. Uh, to do a phenotypic assessment, uh, to calculate, for instance, frailty index, uh, you would need to hire uh, a doctor which would uh, uh, conduct this assessment. So, uh, but uh, the cost of Girosend scales as tech product. So the more uh, the sample is, the cheaper the uh, per person measurement is. So that's a very uh, interesting uh, point. Uh, the third uh, point is that, as I said, you can get the whole history of uh, 
patterns which uh, was happening even before you decided to conduct a study on a person. Uh, and you can uh, do a very interesting trick. You can use a person himself as a control group and then compare results uh, after the intervention retrospectively. So how uh, GiroSense was trained? Uh, we used two uh, biobanks, UK Biobank and Enhance. Uh, we also have our free mobile app, which uh, uh, we use uh, data from. And uh, we also provide our service as an API for our collaborators, and we get some dat data out of there. So we have more than 200,000 subjects already. Uh, many of them are uh, quite greatly annotated, uh, and uh, we constantly retrain and uh, improve our model. Uh, proof of concept uh, is published into papers, one of them in aging, the other one in nature communications. And uh, the next question is uh, why we think uh, it works. Uh, today morning, Andrea already told about uh, steps being a good predictor of a person morbidity and mortality. And that's quite, quite known to you. Like the more steps you do, the longer you will probably live. Another uh, important and known biomarker is gait speed you can obviously see these patterns in steps data. Um, we uncover these patterns and uh, some other hidden metrics, and uh, then uh, it allows us to compute a biological age acceleration score and therefore biological age. And if you think of it, it becomes uh, a little bit uh, obvious. So the ability of an organism to move through the environment uh, is uh, probably a good manifestation of his or overall whole health state, uh, thus his biological age. But uh, the interesting thing about steps is that uh, not all steps are created equal. And uh, we did this interesting study where we subdivided the population by um, professions. And uh, if we just uh, put uh, this on the graph, we see a peculiar pattern that people who move more, they actually do live less, and uh, there is a negative uh, activity on y-axis. So uh, many people who uh, move uh, more, they live less, uh, and people who move less, they uh, tend to live more. Uh, which doesn't make sense because we have a lot of uh, epidemiological studies uh, that uh, I showed you on the previous slide. Uh, however, uh, if we do um, uh, use our biomarker, we uh, see uh, the gradual decline. So if uh, biological age acceleration and therefore the biological age is uh, higher, uh, biological, uh, so uh, the less the person lives. And um, you wonder probably who is uh, this occupation and that, that, that these are security people. For some reason, they live the most. So uh, we can see that um, yeah, in that case, our biomarker uh, greatly outperforms uh, just steps as biomarker. Uh, another study we have done is we used uh, UK Biobank to predict uh, COVID mortality. And uh, just the numbers uh, of steps is uh, not sufficient to predict whether a person uh, will die from COVID. Uh, whereas uh, a pheno age, uh, a Morgan Living uh, blood-based clock, and our clock GiroSense, were able to predict uh, uh, a likelihood of a person dying from COVID. And again, uh, uh, we compared uh, steps, um, uh, we compared steps during lockdown when obviously people started to move way less. Uh, and our biomarker and uh, 
we didn't quite see uh, the difference uh, in our biomarker, which is uh, quite obvious, but we have seen uh, people move uh, way less with steps. A uh, couple of words about resilience. Uh, uh, at uh, the conference uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago, we have seen uh, Felipe from Evolution saying uh, a lot about importance of resilience in aging. And we can also measure resilience in uh, STEPS uh, data. Uh, and uh, the interesting uh, thing we observed is that it behaves itself according to uh, Gombert's uh, law. Uh, so it rises exponentially uh, with age. Uh, so the uh, older the person is, the less resilient uh, he becomes. So uh, why do I think uh, GiroSense is important for our industry? Uh, I think uh, it's about five to 10 years until the first uh, Asian intervention hits the market, and about 10 to 25 years until we hit longevity escape velocity. Uh, so we have this window when we have to use uh, lifestyle and supplements and combination of lifestyle and supplements, and we need to do a lot of uh, testing in humans uh, to understand what works best. Uh, the second uh, important point is uh, that um, variables will only get better. Uh, there will be more sensors, there will be more data. So our biomarker on, uh, will only get better, so we will uh, be able to uh, do more precise uh, calculations, and uh, we will be able to do more personalized uh, calculations and recommendations. Uh, we also think that more focus will go to resilience, and we already do measure it. Uh, and uh, the other interesting uh, uh, use case I will uh, uh, tell you about later is that uh, it is possible to continuously track uh, public health with uh, our biomarker. Uh, that's uh, our internal data on uh, people implement implementing intermittent fasting. Uh, and uh, using our biomarkers, we can clearly see uh, the efficacy uh, uh, of uh, fasting uh, into slowing down biological age acceleration. Uh, it's more pronounced uh, in men, uh, but uh, you can clearly see that the signal is there, which is very important. You can, uh, you can test uh, many things like that and uh, uh, then explore uh, the ones with the signal uh, more deeply. Uh, we also uh, can clearly see uh, people who smoke uh, in the data, and people who smoke uh, tend to be biologically older, uh, other things equal. Uh, and uh, the interesting part, which is uh, also uh, proved by many studies, is that people who quit smoking uh, the uh, biological age uh, gets uh, basically reset. We also can see uh, it in, in our data. Uh, and uh, another interesting thing uh, that uh, we, uh, um, we see uh, this signal both on iPhone and iWatch. Uh, why it is important? Uh, uh, because 6.6 .6 billion people have smartphones whereas uh, only hundreds of millions do have smartwatch. So it means uh, that it allows us to make like, really big uh, epidemiological studies using uh, our approach. Uh, though the uh, data we get from Apple Watch is uh, a little bit better, so we, we, uh, we need less time uh, to give the same quality of prediction. Uh, uh, the possible use I was talking about was, for instance, uh, uh, compare people ac across demographies, across lifestyles, or across regions. Here is the map of Dublin, and th this is a mock-up data, but I if we uh, were able to ask uh, one in, in 20 inhabitants of Dublin to share uh, his uh, health data with us, we might be able to track the 
health map of Dublin life, and we can, uh, for instance, assess such things as uh, health policy in certain municipalities or uh, park opening or infrastructure project and its effect on uh, uh, biological age uh, in this particular area. Uh, we already work with uh, several uh, interesting companies. One of them is PepsiCo, uh, the, uh, where we um, help them to uh, do uh, confidential uh, uh, yet trials. Other uh, great collaborator is uh, Humanity App, which uh, many of you might know of. Uh, we uh, provide our API as a tool to calculate uh, what uh, they call H score. Uh, and uh, H score they use to uh, do personalized recommendation in their app. And we also um, collaborate with uh, Brian and Andrea in National University of Singapore, uh, where we use our biomarkers to assess uh, what they do, uh, what uh, trials they uh, conduct. So we ask for more collaborations. Uh, I think any clinical trials uh, that we do for longevity industry needs to be empowered with a digital biomarkers, because if you spend uh, so much money on the clinical trials, like adding a digital biomarker to that, it's, uh, it's peanuts. Uh, we also uh, want uh, to test supplements and uh, protocols of uh, multiple supplements and interventions. So supplement industry or uh, citizen science, uh, please be welcome uh, to uh, think how we can collaborate. Uh, health tech apps, obviously, uh, you can use our API. Uh, health authorities, that might be a very interesting one, uh, and um, we can make a really big impact there. And insurance industry, corporate wellness, and longevity clinics, I would be happy to speak with you how we can uh, work together. Uh, well, uh, the scientist behind GiroSense is Pete Fedichev, physicist with uh, almost 80 uh, papers. We have Brian Kennedy on our board. Uh, our science is published in Scientific American uh, and TechCrunch, uh, and that's uh, um, uh, beyond uh, what I showed you before, the actual scientific uh, papers. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, you can scan this code and get my contacts, or you can just catch me and uh, ask questions. Uh, thank you for your attention.